Hello everyone, welcome to my little uh, kit video here. I get a lot of compliments or questions about the quality, both audio and video, of the vlogs that I do, the off-road adventures, and also my crazy survival adventures I do over on Can We Survive? So I figured if some of you guys are gear junkies like me, maybe you'd be interested in seeing kind of what I use to do my, my filmmaking and my vlogging. And I thought I'd share it with you. Um, those of you who don't know, my name's Chris. A lot of you guys know me as Meaty. I do gaming videos on YouTube. I also live stream uh, gaming videos. But that's just one part of me. I'm, I have a full-time job. I, I love going out in the outdoors and camping. I have a specific channel for that called Can We Survive, where me and, me and my buddy go out and we do little adventures and crazy stuff. Um, but I also like to do vlogs and I try and, I'm trying to get into making short little films, you know, it kind of an indie type thing, but it's, most people call them vlogs. I call them, you know, little mini films if they have some kind of content where it's going for that. Haven't really been able to do it yet, but I've got, um, I've got some ideas coming up. So let's just, let's get into this right away. So what, what I have here is, this is my main bag. Everything fits in this one little bag. Everything that I use to capture all my shots. Well. Within reason, obviously I got tripods and then my drone that doesn't fit in this bag, but the basics, everything fits in here. This is a Manfrotto bag. Um, on top here you can actually mount a tripod. This pulls out, tripod slides in. It's pretty cool. It's it's a nice bag. I, I'm kind of a, a you know, kind of a, a bag collector in a way, whether it's for for cameras, for equipment, for camping, for you know, whatever. I, I just I have a thing about bags. I don't know what it is, but I, I went through a few bags that were much smaller than this. I looked at some that were much bigger. Oh, by the way, my background music is brought to you by my wind chime over here. I think it it can be annoying sometimes, but most of the time it's kind of relaxing, especially when you're working on tedious little things in the garage or something. Hopefully, it's not too loud, but the wind is picking up a bit, and the wind chime is in effect. So. In the sides here, um, carry, let's see, I've got a little Manfrotto tripod. These are really nice for sitting on a desk or something. Now you remember, may, you may not, may or may not know, so I'll, I'll treat it as you don't know. I, I film everything myself. I film myself unless I'm on the adventures with my buddy and then we both do filming, but I've got uh, cables here, basically HDMI type cables, mini, miniature, all the different uh, styles of HDMI and that's, just in case I need to do some previewing on an external monitor or on a computer monitor, something like that. Have to be ready when you're in the field to double check your footage uh, so you get the shot. You might be hundreds of miles from home and that would really be bad. There's another pocket on this side that I have more cables in. GoPro style, you, you know, USB cables, all the different types of USB cables. I've got a Pelican. Uh, SD card holder here. These are my spares that are in here right now. I actually have 128 gig in this camera. I have 128 in the drone. I have 128 in my my GoPro. I think no, 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 no. 64 in my GoPro. I think. Got a little tiny screwdriver in here. That's for some of the tripod mounts that don't come with the thumb screws. You actually have to. Then it's just a little camera strap. You actually have to. Um, screw it in, which is kind of a pain. I, I, I switched out one of them, but still, my tripod setup is still a little bit of a work in progress. So getting inside the bag, look here. When you first open it to about this far, when this camera here is inside this bag, it parks right there. So it's the, the lens, it'll, lens slides right in and the camera sits so you can get access to your camera like this. But I, I don't, I might reconfigure this bag because I never carry this camera inside there. I always have that camera mounted on my little tripod here, which can sit on anything, it can wrap around things, you can hold it and vlog to yourself. I always have that camera mounted when I'm driving places because you never know when you're going to need your camera. I don't want to have to pull it out of the bag, mount it on a tripod, and get the shot. So here's my primary camera, the Canon 80D. Right now it's got the 16-35L to 35 L lens on it. And the microphone I use primarily is a stereo microphone. It's not a shotgun mic. I, I like the sound quality, the uniqueness of the surrounding ambient sounds. Uh, this is a 
this is a good camera for me. I really like it. I like the uh, features it's got. The the actual microphone, as you can see there, is a Rode Stereo Video Mic X. So I may reconfigure the bag, but the bag is set up for your camera to sit here and then, you know, it's just like where my hand is and the lens goes inside here. Okay, pretty neat little setup. I didn't know, again, I didn't know if I was gonna like it, but I, I really do enjoy this bag. So looking at the top part here, uh, it's just a, you have a couple of um, mesh pockets. Up here I've got some more HDMI, some different cables, some unique cables. Some of them are for my tablet, computer to tablet, in case I wanna use it as a, a monitor for my camera, a bigger monitor than what's on this camera. In here I've got, uh, extra batteries for my microphones. I've got a USB drive that will convert mini SD and SDs into the PC so I can do high speed transfers with uh, USB 3.0. I've got my spare Canon batteries for this one. I also have uh, chargers for the stuff in here. In the bottom here is the little GoPro section which is all the GoPro batteries, the remote for the GoPro, and some a couple of mounts. I have a whole bag of mounts that ride around in the Jeep with me, but this is some small stuff that um, resides. And then in here is my, this is an Nvidia Shield tablet. Okay, so what I use this for is when I fly my drone, it's bigger than a cell phone, not as big as an iPad. It works great. So this is the NVIDIA Shield. Um, it works great for me. I, I did research on this stuff and some people said, you know, this doesn't work for me, that doesn't work for me. It works great for me, so. There's also in the back here, before I completely open this up, in the back here is a zipper. And in here you can put a small laptop. It would have to be a thin one because it's not a whole lot of room thickness wise, but it's got it's enough room to slide a little laptop in there for some, maybe some of the on the go editing. So basically inside I've got, this is my GoPro session. This camera is, I'll, I'll discuss the, I'll lay this out like it's um, an adventure in my Jeep. This is my forward looking camera that looks out the windshield from the passenger side for that camera view. That's basically what this is designed for. I actually have it inverted like this and it's got a mount to the roll bar and it gives you the forward looking view. Then I've got this camera here, which is a little Canon Vixia Mini X. And what this does is this mounts inverted as well with the screen down like this, right? And this is my dash cam. So this camera mounts next to that one, but this one faces back into the driver and the passenger compartment. So when we're driving, we can actually talk. Now this is a weird, unique camera. Um, I got it because the video is okay, but the audio quality is really good. I didn't want to have to do an external audio recorder and just use a GoPro, so I, I got this one. Um, it hasn't really been 100% tested in the field yet. It's got a RAM mount on it, so that's what the ball is, you see. It's got a RAM mount, and I just mounted it inverted. The camera knows that it's upside down, so it inverts the picture for me, just like the GoPro does. So I got GoPro session, that little Canon, that's a dash cam, a forward-looking cam. This is my GoPro Hero 4. This is the camera that I recorded a lot of the early Can We Survive videos with. All Everything on Can We Survive was recorded with this, this little camera right here. So this is kind of my, it's a high quality camera. I can mount, you know, if I want to do unique views, but GoPro's in here. I've got a spare microphone in case something happens to the one that's on this camera. This is a Rode um, VideoMic Pro, and it's on a shock mount with the dead cat on it for wind. Very important you pay attention to wind. I've got some extra lenses in here. This is my 10 to 18 vlogging lens. Really nice, lightweight lens. I've also got a uh, 50 millimeter lens. For th these are all for this Canon um, 80D. That's what these are. Got my zoom recorder. What this is, if you don't know, this can do audio recording. You can use it like a microphone during an interview. You can sync it up to a camera like a GoPro when you need high quality audio. I also have a a dead cat that goes over the top of this for wind muffling. This is good to carry with you. You never know. You always want to be able to capture good audio with your video. So it's important to have that stuff. This is my this is my uh, 70 to 70 to 200 lens for the Canon. This is a zoom, obviously a zoom lens to catch 
those crazy long distance stuff. But you'd be surprised what kind of images you can actually capture up close with it. It does a really good job of, of doing the depth of field, bokeh, blurred image where you focus in and the whole background gets blurred out. It does a really good job of that. Um, some other miscellaneous stuff I've got in this bag is I've got some power banks, some USB power banks. This one is just a Chinese one, I think. It's pretty good though. It's pretty good EC technology. Got that in here. I've got some of my, my filters for the camera lenses, cases and stuff, uh, UV protection, uh, ND filters, things of that sort. Some more chargers. I've got another small. There's a small one here. This is really good for the GoPro batteries. This is a small power bank. If you're hiking and you need to take extra power, this is the Anchor one, if that's how you say, A-N-K-E-R. This is a good brand. I have a lot of my USB chargers is this brand. So these are pretty good, nice. It, I mean, it's gonna be a little bit heavy, but it's much lighter than the big heavy bank there. So uh, lenses. Lens covers, a bunch of junk like this, some cleaning stuff in there. I've got my original GoPro in here. <laughs> this was my first GoPro that I ever got. This is my dead cat for this Zoom H5 recorder that gets stuffed. Everything has this little place. So this little GoPro, this is the one I mount like underneath the car to look at the shocks and things like that because I've had it so long that, you know, it's not that I'm not worried that it's gonna break or something, but who knows. This is a camera that I carried as a backup. It's a Sony um, A6000. Problem with this camera is it doesn't have an audio input, which I did, this stuff I didn't know when I bought it. It doesn't have an audio input for my mics. And the camera, or the display, will not flip up so I can see it from the front. And being that I record this stuff by myself, I need to be able to see the image when I finally sit down or whatever when I'm moving around. So. I'm not super happy about the purchase of this camera. I got this camera long before I got the one that you're looking through right now. Um, but I got this camera. This is a uh, 35 millimeter lens on it right now. I also have a zoom in here as well, which is, I believe like a 70, it's a 70 to, where's the writing on these bad boys? 70 to 210, or oh, 55, 55 to 210 on this one. So this is the zoom lens for this little guy. But what I found recently, I, you know, I was gonna sell it. I was gonna sell it, I still might. I'm not 100% sure. I found recently there's an app in here for $9, you gotta pay for it, but it's through the Sony Play Memory Store. It's an app that goes inside the camera and you can do time lapses on this camera. This camera, the Canon, does really good time lapses, really easy to do, and um, I'm gonna try this out. If that doesn't work out, I don't wanna have to carry it in these lenses. I'll probably just try and sell it. And here's my charging pocket with for my, uh, this is my GoPro dual battery charger. I've got my Canon charger for the batteries. And then I also have this. This is the one I was talking about. This is the brand Anker, A-N-K-E-R, right? It's a wall socket. And it has two different styles. There's, um, an IQ and the other, I don't know the exact name of these two, but the IQ and this one. You gotta look at the equipment that you have. One of these will do a fast charge, like they're 2.7 amps. This top one does a fast charge for my NVIDIA Shield, and the other one will do fast charges for things that are compliant with that IQ Plus technology. It's a technology where it's talking back and forth, I believe, to the end device, and it allows it to charge as fast as possible without damaging the equipment. So moving on a little bit, I showed you this. This is my small little, pretty much always on my camera tripod, really handy, Joby Gorillapod. It's really handy. I just picked this up. It's a monopod with a, um, it's got a kind of a, a nice steady base on the bottom, but you can also unlock this to where you can still get your full pivot of your monopod without having to have absolute flat ground. I thought this might be helpful in some situations, maybe where I'm trying to get a long distance shot. I put the quick release on so it matches my, my other uh, cameras. We're gonna wrap it up here in a second, guys. So that guy, and then this is my main tripod here. It's big, it's heavy. This is a, a, the monopod and this tripod are the same brand. They're called Benro. This is a Benro S7. Video, video tripod, not photography. So it's nice, thick, 
aluminum. It's I didn't I didn't go for carbon fiber. It's too expensive. It's got this ball here. So the way you adjust is actually you grab it here, loosen it, and you can do a quick adjustment on this half ball. It's a really nice way to set up and balance your camera. On the top, it's got level bubbles with an LED light in it. It's got nice, smooth, fluid panning, right? Panning, tilting, okay? It's also got uh, the drag adjustment, and it's also got a positive stop counterbalance over here. So you can adjust the counterbalance, so if your camera falls forward, it's not just gonna fall and fall over with all the momentum, it'll slow it down. It's just some safety features. Finally, to get some of the images that I do, I've got the DJI, uh, Phantom 4. It's only been crashed three times and it survived. It, it, I take care of it because it's expensive. It's it, This one I got, I actually pre-ordered them bef before it came out. So I got it like the day it came out from Amazon and it was, I think it was $1,400, $1,399, something like that. But it's, it's, some of the shots that I get on it, I think it's worth it. It's a nice drone. It's not a toy, even though even though you feel like it's a toy, you could fly it around and have fun with it, but when you get some of these aerial shots and where you're following, maybe I'm following my Jeep with it or something, it's actually a very good tool for this kit to try and bring better, better quality vlogs, better quality films to you guys at YouTube. So, I don't know how long this lasted. I know I've been bumping my gums the whole time, but this was kind of for you gear junkies out there like me that, that appreciate um, knowing what people use and how they get the quality that they do. I render my stuff with Sony Vegas. I know, I know I'm not a pro. I don't use all the stuff like Adobe uh, Premiere or Final Cut and all the stuff the other guys use. I use Sony Vegas for my, my video games and there's nothing wrong with Sony Vegas for, for this for right now. It works for me. It doesn't slow me down. I can actually get through it really fast. And I, I think it's important that it's inexpensive and use what works for you. That's what works for me. It may not work for others. It may, uh, you know, the others may use these other professional things or stuff that they're more keen to, something more they're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with that, and you can see the quality comes through. So that's what I use. Sony Vegas. Actually, it's only Sony Vegas Studio. It's $99, and it's it works great. It works great. Um, this is my basic kit. When I go out in the field, when I go do something, this is what I take with me. So whatever shots, whether it be dash cam, forward looking cam, aerial view, looking at the shocks and tires, going over a jump on my bicycle, motorcycle, whatever it may be, this is what I capture it with. Thank you guys for joining me.